Um, I want to make this like conversation as respectful as possible and like share your opinion as much as you can. Um, but also realize <laughs> that if someone doesn't have the same opinion as you, they're not wrong. They're just different. And uh, try to like listen, not just hear. What do you think, uh, if anything, do you guys think stuff should change? Like around schools or anything about gun laws or gun violence? What do you mean like around schools? Like, do you think there should be any laws placed, or um, do you think anything uh, like drastic should happen? Any laws should be changed? Um, I definitely think they should enforce the ones that are in place. Um, I think most people are in favor of increasing security in schools and around schools, um, increasing the number of SROs, or, input, or putting metal detectors in place. Those are all options. But yeah. yeah, in terms of recent unfortunate events like these shootings that have seemed to pop up a lot, I mean, that's a bipartisan issue, which is important to realize. Nobody wants that to happen. Yeah. It's just a matter of figuring out how to go about solving that solution. Mm -hmm. um, personally, for me, in terms of if we're talking about gun control, I understand the Second Amendment. I see the like belief in it, and I get where people are coming from. And I think that's something that I don't want to infringe upon. But also, if I'm looking at guns, I just feel like it's unnecessary and a bit, um, what's the word? Uh, it, it just doesn't really make sense to me that people are able to buy these semi-automatic rifles. Just feels like overkill almost. I get the, I understand the desire to have a gun that makes sense to me and I don't think that's something that we should necessarily infringe upon in as a whole. But for me it just seems unnecessary and, and just doesn't make sense to me why people are able to buy these military grade weapons. I agree with you. Um, I think in the last year, um, going from Pulse to Vegas, you've had two of the deadliest mass shootings and they've, they've increased in their frequency. Yeah. Um, so I hate to say it, but it's a trend. Um, in this past decade, these mass shootings, and they've almost exclusively been from AK-47s and AR-15s and semi-automatic weapons. Um, to me, I don't see their use in society. You can't use them for hunting because the bullet tumbles. Their use is to have maximum damage on their target, on the object they're trying to hit. Um, so hunters can't use them because they actually destroy the meat that they're trying to hunt for. Um, their only use is mass destruction and their only use is in war. So there's no reason why a law-abiding citizen who's just trying to maybe defend themselves should have them. Yeah, I think that just the vague you know, concept of self-defense, having a gun, like would not really even exist if pretty much every civilian was banned from having any sort of gun like for hunting reasons or for any other purposes and if really the only people having guns are police officers or the government or people who are very responsible with them then there would be no need for like that self-defense like you know like oh yeah I need some self-defense or something and you know yeah and and I, I see what you're saying I also feel like there's probably some sort of security if people have a gun and they're worried about an intruder in their home. So that's something that I understand and, and get where people are coming from. Um, so that's just kind of a flip side to that. Mm -hmm. that I think have. going off with <clears throat> the home security, you don't necessarily need to use the weapon to have like, uh, home security. Now, not necessarily like an assault rifle, but my uncle is a big uh, gun guy and he says that you don't need like an assault rifle or um, or even a pistol if you just have a shotgun the sound of the shotgun is enough to scare a majority of criminals away from you in the, in the first place I think another thing with having just like a normal pistol or just a normal handgun um, people actually don't know how to lock them away mm -hmm. um, there are actually uh, thousands of incidents each year where children get a hand like a hold of guns um, as well as there's accidents within the home um, also suicides um, these things can still happen with handguns. So I think if we're gonna pass any legislation, um, I'm for banning the assault rifle. Also, just going through more training. Um, in Kansas, they actually repealed the law that says that you need training to carry a weapon. Um, and I completely disagree with that because if you know what guns are, you know the power that they have. And you should understand as an owner what you're getting yourself into and you should know how to properly take care of it because if you don't know how to take care of it, then that's how bad things happen. I feel like with different states having very different gun laws, I know Georgia has a, is very conservative when it comes to these gun laws, and they are very for, you know, for like the, the right to self-defense and for a lot of people having guns. I feel that if, you know, maybe executive action is taken or if, you know, just 
the federal government takes a much bigger role in having more of like a cohesive set of law of regulations, then that would probably make like just everyone more unified and that will hopefully make it so that, you know, assault rifles and a lot of other deadly weapons would be banned. So and as somebody who owns a, a lot of guns, um, I've been through the process of, of going through background checks and purchasing guns. And it's not as easy as it seems, but um, there is an argument to be made that um, the background checks that we're supposed to have in place need to be enforced more often. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is owning, owning a weapon is an important part of being an American. And that's been true since the founding of the Constitution. Um, yes, it obviously can't be used for hunting, as you said, but that's not really the point of an AR-15. The point of an AR-15 is to be able to defend against a tyrannical government, right? So that was the point of the original Second Amendment. Um, as we've seen in you know, the last hundred years across Europe, across Asia, across the Middle East, we have tyrannical governments controlling their people and the people not being able to defend themselves and that's why the the founding fathers put the Second Amendment in the Constitution. I would, I would disagree with this argument that it's used to defend yourself because the, the Japanese during World War II were put in internment camps. You can't say the same thing from them. The government swooped in, they took away their rights, and they essentially imprisoned them. They did take away their guns rights. Guns did not help guns. them in that sense. I think of the Native Americans as well. Born on this country, born in this country, they still have the right, they still have the Second Amendment right. They still got their land taken away. They still got everything taken away from them. So to me, this, I, this idea of having guns to defend yourself from a tyrannical government isn't really valid if you look at the history of minority people, especially, um, within the country, because they have still, their rights have still been infringed upon. Um, and if you look even in Europe as well, they haven't had a Second Amendment, yet they have still become some of the most democratic institutions in this world. Here's, I have a question uh, for Ben. Yeah. Do you think that n the idea of like, um, put it, uh, what, what am I thinking? The idea of having guns to defend yourself against t tyrannical government is more the idea that like they will come in and somehow invade your like right to be a citizen or is it more about the idea that they're gonna like helping a, in a revolution? Like, I don't really fully um, understand. Kind the, of the first one, mostly. Um, and to go back to your point, a, an example of weapons um, stopping a tyrannical government from you know, hurting its constituents is the American Revolution. The American Revolution was built upon about 3% of the, the colony's population taking up their, their own arms against the, the British invasion, or the British um, forces that were in their homes. And that started the freest and best country in the world. That's how America got its roots. Um, your point about European countries, uh, the vast majority of European countries still have guns. Um, we look at England, who banned their guns about 20, 25 years ago. Right after the gun ban was instituted, um, you had a, a massive spike in murders with knives, acid attacks. Um, you had a, a huge increase in suicides, actually, which is, you know, questionable on whether or not that correlates, but it, it did happen. And that was almost entirely based upon uh, people being unable to feel safe in, in their homes, in the streets, wherever they were. Um, yeah. And a country like uh, the Netherlands has on average one gun per household and their gun crime is significantly lower than the United States. Yeah. So I don't think it's necessarily something that legislation can do. I think it's mostly about the number of guns that like it, it could be like about just the, as an identity of like the American culture around guns could also be a large factor about it because guns are huge in the United States like a big part of what <coughs> people think of as America um, so that could have something to do with it that legislation might not necessarily be able to tackle. It will be interesting to see those numbers of acid attacks, um, stabbings, uh, possible suicides if they still even compare to the number of killed by guns in America, um, we still have the murder rate, one of the highest in the first world country um, circle. And so, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the statistics, if you look at graphs, it's exponentially higher. I mean, the fact is, the more guns you have, the more deaths you have. 
So to me, I feel that legislation towards stricter background checks, meaning not only checking that you're a law-abiding citizen, but checking domestic abuse po uh, possibly, uh, checking possibly your grades in school, not well, not your grades, but if you've ever had an incident where an administrator or a teacher felt that you were harmed to the classroom, um, and things like that, closing those loopholes and making it so that we know that these people, with people who can pull the trigger, do it in a proper manner and they do it out of self-defense and not for harm. Question, do you think that the, because I agree with, I mean, I think we probably all have this opinion that having a gun is a big part of the American culture, or at least being an American citizen. Do you think that limiting, like saying, hey, you can't have assault rifles, semiotic, military grade assault rifles, those are off limits. You can have, you know, everything else that falls below that grade of gun. Do you think that would still hinder, like, that part? Like, would people be upset that that image you aren't able to have these military grade weapons, but you're still able to have other guns? Do you think that would be a big factor? Well, the, the reason that guns are such a huge part of American culture is because they were so crucial in our founding. Um, I think that, well, okay, first off, um, the AR-15 is not a, a military grade weapon. It hasn't been used in the military since the early 1960s. But you know what I mean. Like yeah. those types of guns that are just feel mass like overkill. Yes. Um, <laughs> mass destruction is a, an interesting term to use because um, it's, it's obviously weighted in one direction. Um, for example, my AR-15 that I have at my farm has not been used in any mass destruction whatsoever. Um, it's, it's the people. And these weapons of mass destruction, that's, the AR-15 is not a weapon of mass destruction. Um, if you look at the classifications of a weapon of mass destruction, those are illegal to own in the United States. And the AR-15 just is not one of them. The M4 is one of them, and you can't own an M4 in the United States. The M416, um, the M4A7, those are all weapons that you cannot own in the United States. Um, and for good reason, arguably. Uh, but, Ben, I have a question for you. Yeah. So you said that the AR-15 has just pretty much been on your farm, you've not used it. So if you were to use it, for what instances would you use it for? Defend against a tyrannical government. And obviously, you know, I don't believe that that's going to happen in the next five years. I don't believe that's going to happen in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. 50 years is a bit hazy. I don't know what's going to happen in 50 years. And 100 years, See, I have no idea. But I don't know if we can wait 50 years. I mean, if you ask the victims at Parkland, if you ask the victims at Sandy Hook, Vegas, um, Pulse, you can't, we can't wait because these weapons are being used to kill people. And to me, that counts as mass destruction. When you kill dozens of people at a time, to me, that's, that's it, that's right there. That should really be enough for us to put a ban on it. Because at this point, I'm terrified of the fact that anyone can get this gun at this time and anyone can start a mass shooting anywhere. Well, not anybody. Um, if you have a criminal record, if you've been deemed mentally unstable in a court, you can't have one of these weapons. But what does it take to deem yourself mentally unstable? Um, if you're charged with a crime and then you go to court and you're deemed mentally unstable. Well, what does that mean? But like, there's like a, the a court, that's a classification. That's a classi court. Like, yeah. that's part of the judgment is that you're. I don't know. They're mentally insane. insane. But, but the thing is that, like, the insanity, like, defense like, only applies. Oh no, it's to not. It's not just insanity. Though. Yeah, it's uh, not exactly. just insanity. It's it, it actually only applies. Yeah, like, like you said, it only applies to a very low percentage of actual shooters because most of these shooters actually fall under just anger, anger at their social status, at what their life has become, and they take it out on other people. You can't diagnose that because if you were trying to categorize that as a people who could not have a weapon then you would actually have a large population in the United States who would be deemed ineligible for guns. But by whose standards are we, are we deeming them unstable? Um, it's in what way is gun legislation going to stop that if you say that they don't exhibit behaviors that stop them from owning a gun, right? Like, like in Parkland, the, the police showed up to that kid's house 22 times before the, the shooting happened, and not once did a police report be filed, not once did anything happen. They failed time and time again to to stop this kid from owning the weapons that he shouldn't have owned. And I think we all agree that that kid shouldn't have been able to own the weapons that he owned because he was mentally unstable and that was clear from counseling in schools. Um, there is an argument to be made that um, counselors in schools should have um, the ability to put up children for um, a mentally unstable um, 
decision. So essentially a counselor would send a, a child to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist would deem that kid mentally unstable or stable. Um, there's an argument to be made for that and I would be in favor probably. Um, but it's, there's a big argument about who is the one deciding the kids are mentally unstable. But the thing is that the insanity plea like only works less than one percent of the time. So it's not just the insanity plea. So it, like if you go into court and uh, I don't know, you're charged with domestic abuse, mm -hmm. right? If you're charged with domestic abuse because of uh, I don't know, like pretty much anything. If you're charged with domestic abuse because you were angry with your spouse, mm -hmm. not only do you get charged with domestic abuse, but you also get charged with a mentally unstable. Jurors, or well, so jurors, wouldn't that mean right. that pretty much everyone who's committed a crime or had some sort of domestic abuse by just beating someone up is mentally unstable according to that interpretation? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. And the vast majority of those people are not allowed to own guns because they're okay. convicted. That's right. actually incorrect because in mo mo like, there's still a lot of states who do allow people who have been abused or who, people who have been accused of domestic abuse still own a weapon. Actually, Kansas just, just this past week passed a law saying that they won't allow that anymore just this past week. Mm -hmm. So I, to me, there's still, it sounds like there's still so many loopholes. Um, if you, if the argument is that criminals can't get one, to me, there's still a black market, there's still a gun show, there's still, are so many options out there for these people to get these guns. Yeah, those options will still be available when you ban guns, unless you instate a full revolution where the government comes in and takes each individual's gun which would s start a civil war, essentially. I mean, if the government came to my house and said that they were gonna take all of my guns, I would, be at, I would meet them at the door with a gun. Question, is there a difference between how you buy a pistol versus how you buy a, well, whatever the name of that An assault rifle? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there are some differences. So um, there are levels of background checks or levels of like, degree to which you can buy a gun. It's just a different system, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, essentially. Um, could you wait, question, could you just go to a counter and buy a pistol or like the lowest grade gun or would you no. also need a background check? You would for need a background check for any firearm that you're going to buy. There's usually a three day waiting period depending on who you buy from. It's either three days, five days, or seven days. Um, and then after you buy the weapon, um, you'll leave, they'll do the background check, they'll go through everything, they'll make sure you're not a convict, they'll make sure you've not been deemed mentally unstable by a, a court, and then after that, they'll contact you and you can come back in and pick up your weapon. And I assume with the AR-15, it would be a, more, a longer background check? Yes, or more it extensive? is a more extensive background check. That actually did not apply for Nicholas Cruz. Um, he got his AR-15 <coughs> the same day he went into the store. Um, however, the pistol he did have, he had to wait three to five days for that. Um, so it actually is interesting in like states like Florida, it's actually harder to get a pistol um, than it is to get an AR-15. Well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I do think background checks definitely need to be increased because, sorry to kind of undercut your argument a little bit, but I was with my dad when he bought his shotgun, and same day he got, same day he went in and said he wanted to purchase it, did the background check type thing, and we had the gun the same day. So I don't, I think that either the leg, like the laws themselves aren't being implemented, or if they don't already exist, some kind of increase in background check does need to happen. Do you guys think you can actually change the law, though? Do you guys think you can enforce new laws or change the ones already existing? With activist movements like the walkout we're going to have, that would be a great way to get their attention. There's over possibly. 700 walkouts being planned, um, including the one at North. Um, and the reason we walked out and the reason I planned a town hall, the reason we went to March for Our Lives, um, they're being forced to listen to us. It, I, the polls are out there. Approximately, like, it, it's, the polls vary, but it's between, I've seen 80 and 90% of people support these further background checks, support better gun reform. So we can't keep lying to ourselves that our lawmakers, who are supposed to represent the majority of Americans, are actually acting for them. Because in truth, they're acting against these polls. They aren't voting for more gun reform. They're voting on behalf of their NRA donations, on behalf of their gun lobbyist donations. The fact that we, as students in the top district in this state, are walking out and saying that we, as teenagers, recognize this and we are afraid to go to school, that's powerful. And guess what? We're going to have registered to vote booths there. And the seniors around this table, 
you guys can vote this November. So if they Suffrage. don't act, <laughs> if they don't act, <laughs> if they don't act for us, we'll just vote them out. Um, the fact that we are disrupting our learning, our learning process. The fact that we have to walk out at 10 a.m. to say that we don't feel safe in those very same classrooms we're walking out of. That's a statement, and that is saying that something that we want change. And I like. I'm going to be honest. I hate the fact that we have to do this. I hate the fact that I've spent the last two months of my life having to plan this. But they forced our hand, and we have to do this now because we cannot wait until this happens at a Blue Valley school. Until this happens. I, I have a question, real quick. I was reading your uh, about us on the website, and I couldn't really find. I could have not read it correctly, but I couldn't find like a specific plan of like what legislation you wanted. It had like a bunch of vague. We want bipartisan movement. Yeah. What could you give an example of something you would actually want, something concrete you would want implemented through this march? Um, through this march, see, we with this we recognize that there are different spectrums on that, which is why we kind of want to keep it um, vague. If you look at March for Our Lives, they kept it the same way. Um, but personally, for me um, and a lot of the organizers agree that we would really like to see more background checks, and we feel that the solution is not in barricading our schools, but in reducing the amount, the means by which these things are caused, and the means are the guns. I've heard an idea um, that we hire more SROs, but have them be veterans. So not only would it increase the amount of veterans with jobs, uh, so decreasing unemployment, but it will also create a more secure environment at the school, and with maybe having like a bunch of kids around and having like, it could, it could have a positive effect on the mental state of possible war veterans if they might have PTSD or something. It could be a positive all around. Now this is just an idea. I don't know how this would be implemented, but I heard it and I like that idea a little bit. Yeah. I can get behind that, yeah. Cool. Cool. Good idea.